And I'd like to invite you to turn with me to the book of Isaiah, chapter number 55. Isaiah chapter 55, and there are 13 verses within uh, this particular chapter of Isaiah. I want to read several of them, but I would encourage you uh, sometime this week in your devotions to read all 13 of these verses. There are many people that have taken to the book of Isaiah and have actually memorized this particular portion of scripture, which is so encouraging. In verse number three, I'm sorry, uh, verse number one of Isaiah chapter 55, he said, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat, yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which, is, which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Verse number three says, incline your ear, and come unto me, hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. And in verse number six, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. And then I want to read verse number 11. He says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. Father, we thank you again for your word. Lord, again, we say so very often, but Lord, we, we know and we realize this. We testify to this, that your word is anointed. God, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And God, you have given us your word for the express purpose that we might come to know you to walk, Lord, pleasing in your sight. Lord, to walk in harmony with your fellowship. And I pray, God, for the anointing of a God to be upon every ear and heart tonight. Guide us as we look within your word tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, the New Living Translation, verse number three. Come to me with your ears wide open. Listen, and you will find life. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, and I will give you all the unfailing love I promised to David. Beautiful, beautiful words. And uh, the King James Version put it this way, incline your ear. Now, I've read that expression in the Bible several times, and to incline your ear really means uh, to listen intently and receptively to what someone is saying. The phrase is used several places throughout the Bible, as I have made mention, and each time that it's used within uh, the scripture, it's mostly making reference to our listening to what the Spirit of God is saying. Have you ever noticed that there are times when we have a, an acute sense of hearing? Brother Lang made mention of that last Sunday morning, in particular that there uh, last week when he was downstairs that he shut the light off and he was in complete darkness and all of a sudden he began to start to hear some things that he wasn't really expecting. That'll happen to all of us sometimes, especially if we're a little nervous about something. We uh, have our sense of hearing become so acute. And it's almost like we're beginning to hear things that we're wondering, well, did I really hear that? And especially uh, when things, again, are making us a little bit nervous. I uh, was actually in the dentist's office yesterday. And while I was there, it brought memories to me 
uh, throughout my years of going to the dentist's office and sitting in the waiting room. And you know what that's like. You, you hear somebody and they're not screaming, but you hear that drill. And it has such a distinct sound. And you're there sitting there and you're beginning to sweat and thinking, oh, that is a drill. I hope he uses enough Novocaine and freezing today. And uh, you know, there's just something about the sound of a dentist drill that uh, is so unnerving. But I, I thank God I have a wonderful, wonderful dentist. And in particular, what a different sound it is when they've got that drill inside your mouth and what the noise that you hear within your ears. But you know, have you ever been accused of having big ears? You know, I, I've always been kind of concerned about my ears. It's not like I think that they're so big, but I've seriously looked at my ears sometimes and I thought, do they stick out more than what they should? Because, you know, I, I've never been able to keep a pencil on my ear. You know, I know that some of you carpenters, you're, you've got ears that are closer to your head and when you're doing a job and you need a pencil or something, you, you can stick that on there and it just sticks. But me, I've got to wear a ball cap and stick that up um, in my, my, under my cap. But uh, I've always been somewhat self-conscious of really how my ears, um, you know, really stuck out. And, uh, you know, hearing is quite something. My message tonight is this thought, having ears to hear, let us listen to what God is saying, having ears to hear. And um, we used to sing a chorus when we were kids. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. For there's a father up above who looks down in love, and he's concerned about what we hear. And the same thing with our our steps and the same thing with our eyes and so on, you know? And, uh, you know, there's, a, there's really a story to all of that. We need to be careful to what we're listening to, to what we're looking at, to things that we go, where our paths will take us. And, you know, you go into some of these uh, uh, decor, uh, decor shops and, and you'll see some little statues there. And, you know, there's one of these three little monkeys and one's got his hands over his eyes, and one over his ears, and one over his mouth. And it's to say, I see nothing, I hear nothing, and I say nothing. And, and some might suggest, well, that's to really suggest to us that, you know, we're going to live in ignorance and complete uh, unawareness to everything that is really going on around us. Well, I, I don't really think that's really the uh, real message within this. I think it, again, goes to the uh, idea that we need to be very careful of what we're looking at and what we're concentrating on and what we're uh, saying and what we are uh, listening to. I've said it before that our words, you know, our words have creative power. Those things that sometimes occur within our life, it's because we speak them and those things come, come really into being. But tonight, I want to speak about hearing, hearing. And you know, in the natural, uh, hearing can bring us such joy. Um, I've always enjoyed good hearing. Uh, I don't have super hearing, but I've always enjoyed good hearing. And, you know, I think all of us can you know, relate to the fact that there's many things that our ability to hear has brought us such blessing and contentment. I think all of us really enjoy good music. All of us may have a different preference in the genre of music. Uh, younger people like it loud and older people like sometimes the soft music and so on. And, you know, still some couples, you know, you like to uh, spend some time in your evening and listening to some soft music. And, you know, you men might take your ladies in your arms and kind of like do a little soft step and so on. You know, but hearing can bring us such uh, pleasure. And, uh, you know, we like to hear the uh, voices of special people within our lives. And we like to be able to communicate effectively, both in our speech and again, within our hearing. And, you know, sometimes people can be very loud and sometimes people can be very soft and we have to encourage them to speak up because we can't hear them. And, you know, sometimes we like to encourage people to, you know, be careful of how they say it. And then others, you know, they'll say, hey, just give it to me straight. Don't sugarcoat it. I like to hear it. Don't get me 
you know, uh, you know, just don't beat around the bush, but let's let me really know what it is you're trying to say. And that's all because of our ability to be able to hear. The Bible says that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, you know, when you look at yourself and we look at other mankind and we look at the Bible and the Bible says that we are created in God's very own image, the human body is an absolute marvel. It's wonderful. Thousands of systems and processes that take place every day all living organisms and all of them in their uh, intent and the original purpose were to work in harmony with one another so that we could enjoy life. We could enjoy um, our communication and our fellowship with one another. You know, medical science has been so successful when uh, there has been tragedies and accidents of where people have actually have lost limbs. They've been able to reattach limbs through um, medical procedures and even some of our internal organs, you know, of uh, uh, things that will help us with our, our beating hearts, such as pacemakers and so on, and, and, and transplants and, you know, artificial limbs and so on, you know, all of these types of things. But, you know, man can do all of these things through the wonders of medical science. But yet, when we go back to thinking about the, uh, the human form and the human body, Amen. And go back to scripture where the body where the word of God says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We need to understand that it is only God that can give us life. It is only God that can give us breath. The Bible says that God breathed into man the breath of life, and man became a, a living soul. And I want to say that I believe with my heart that we look back to the creation of Adam and Eve, the first man, that when God created them and creating them in his form and in his image, he created them perfect in design for specific purposes. And because of that, God's intention was for us to enjoy tremendous blessings of fellowship one with another, and more importantly, our fellowship with our creator, God Almighty. You know, I remember when I was in grade seven or eight, um, you had different classes in school back then. One class that we had was a, uh, a class called health. That's just what it was. And it really dealt with the human body and it dealt with, you know, life and the way of having a healthy life. But I remember them telling us about how that we have five senses. We have five senses. First one is sight. We have taste. We have smell. We have touch. And we have hearing. And all of these bring great awareness to us and great joy, as well as tremendous blessings, really, in our day-to-day -day life. And then there are times when they are sadly really uh, so often abused and sometimes just through childish actions. I can remember when I was a little boy, I used to like taking a flashlight, sticking it over my eye and, and holding my eye wide open and flashing it off and on, off and on, off and on. And, and then you'd have the lights out and you look up and you saw bright lights. You saw kind of like stars. You do silly things like that. I sometimes get concerned about young people. As I said, they like to listen to it really loud and you know, you know, there is really a danger of, you know, uh, damaging their hearing later in life. And that's why there are so many people today that are wearing, are using hearing aids, not because it was something hereditary, but oftentimes because there has been some poor choices in their upbringing. But I think of a situation that I have from, you know, from being a diabetic that, you know, I have a, a situation with my left eye. In fact, tomorrow morning, I go to see my ophthalmologist and it's perhaps that I will have to have another injection uh, into my left eye which swells and um, you know it has some hemorrhaging going on in the back. But I'm saying to uh, that to say this, we need to appreciate the five senses that we have and we need to be very careful of how we 
conduct ourselves in using these. Amen. But, you know, even, um, you know, the secular world realizes how very important these are. Um, Brother Kelly, I know that, you know, in his specific uh, uh, responsibility with his work, one of the things that in representing the group of uh, uh, tradesmen that he did, he had to be sure that anybody going on a job site, that that employer and that particular job site was using the proper equipment and all the proper safety um, uh, rules that are all around there. Same thing with Brother Lang. He's talked about that different times. You know, our job sites, you know, really are have to be specifically designed and there needs to be the necessary precautions to ensure the safety, uh, uh, not even only the physical, but the mental and the health, uh, health uh, uh, mental health of employees that are going on there. And they even have really governing standards. You know, the CSA, the ACC that they have within the United States of products and things that are made that they must pass these safety standards. Why? Because the human body and our functioning is so very important. Years ago, I was uh, on the job somewhere away from home, and I remember listening to the news, and there was a, a disaster really in the Westfall area of Nova Scotia, a mining disaster where there were a number of people that lost their lives. And of course, as often the case, they will have an inquiry afterwards, and they looked at this and tried to look at it as to why this happened, but more importantly, how do we ensure that this type of accident is not repeated? And so they come up and they even passed in legislation, I think it was Bill 45, if I remember correctly, which was a safety measure to ensure that employers were legislated to ensure a safe work environment. But getting back to these census, you know, when any one of our senses, for whatever reason, becomes dysfunctional, there is great effort made to try to overcome those that are being challenged. For example, those that are blind, either born blind or you know, become blind later in life. You know, we have what we know as the Braille system. Many people that are blind, you know, they depend upon memory of counting steps and the locations of where things are within their home. They go with their memories. I think of smell. You know, you think that, well, what if I can't smell? Well, today, because there's situations and times where people might be in an environment of where there are some gases going on that are not readily uh, available, they'll have alarm systems of lights that are there that will indicate that there is a harmful uh, gases or smells that are there. Touch, you know, we come up really with artificial limbs, although there's no real feeling in that. But again, with, art, uh, with the touch, there are um, artificial limbs and alarm systems. And then I think of taste, you know, there are signs because, you know, ingredients sometimes will have things that are harmful and things that some people are allergic to that, you know, without the ability to be able to taste, they can't taste that and they could consume that and put themselves into danger, you know, and so you often see those little skull with crossbones and something on that. But then I think of hearing, the sense that I really want to focus in tonight, hearing. You know, there's sign language. And I, you know, I, I, I watch uh, Sister Danita sometimes when you're doing sign language. And, you know, I, I don't know if my hands could go that fast. I mean, these people can move their hands faster than I can talk. You know, how that could be, I don't know. But I think of one young lady, uh, sister, uh, brother and sister uh, Miller's daughter, Elizabeth. Now, uh, Elizabeth's mom and dad are both, uh, both deaf. And Elizabeth is very uh, proficient with sign language. And people really enjoy when she does sign language because she's so expressive in how she does her sign language but it's a necessary skill because without that uh, ability to have somebody to be able to do sign language and the people that are deaf to read it, there would be a lack of the ability to communicate. So it actually 
becomes their uh, primary means of communication. And there are many people that are, are deaf that have actually uh, uh, developed the art and improved the art of being able to read lips. And so these are our five senses and some of the ways in which the world has compensated for some of these things. But, you know, I think all of us really enjoy hearing. You know, there's some things that I particularly like to hear. I like being in my cottage and I like hearing the rain on the roof. Just something so relaxing about that. You know, my wife and I, you know, have commented numerous times that in these last several years, the wind has seemingly uh, picked up so much. And I don't know if it's because of the design of our house, but we'll lay in bed at night and you can hear the wind howling. And, you know, I like to hear good music. I like to hear good communication. I like hearing how snow crunches underneath your feet, as long as you don't have to get out there and shovel it. If you're just making a path and you don't have to come back. I like to hear laughter, you know? I, I just really do. And, you know, I like to hear words of encouragement. I really do. And I hope that you folks like to hear words of, uh, uh, of encouragement. And I'm not talking about, you know, people that kind of just come and say, oh, yeah, because they feel they have an obligation to say that. But when there are words that are encouraging you and bringing comfort and cheer and words that will pick you up, I'll tell you, there's just something about it. You know, Pentecostals make no bones about it. We love one another. We love mankind. And I know that, you know, sometimes we need to be careful because, you know, people come up and they'll see two people, especially if they're the same gender, and we'll say, Brother Kelly, I love you, man. You know, you know, we need to be careful sometimes wondering, okay, now what kind of love are they talking about? But I want you to know, when we talk about Christian brotherly love in Christ, I want you to know it is beautiful. There is uh, nothing ugly about all of that. Amen. But I want you to know, I love it when people will tell us, amen, I'm so glad that you're a part of the body of Christ. And for Christians, our ability to hear ought to be really special. You know, when we hear somebody giving their heart to Jesus, and they cry out to God in repentance and God, come into my life and come into my heart. And Lord, I pray God that you would forgive me of my sins. You know, to hear that, it's almost like a cry. And it's almost like I've never been in a delivery room. But what you parents must have felt when you heard that first cry of your newborn baby, to hear somebody receive the Holy Ghost. And as God begins to fill them and they worship God and you see tears streaming down their face. And when you hear people that have gone through such turmoil and situations, they'll get up on a Sunday morning or they'll share a in a, in a conversation of company and they will testify how that God brought me through it and how that, you know, God has never let us down, that God is faithful and so often there are such uh, uh, situations of where people are hearing that, that those that are speaking, it don't know who they're ministering to, but God knows that is exactly what that individual needed to hear just at that time. Thank God for the ability to hear. I believe God hears. The Bible says he has not ears that are heavy. He does not have a hand that's short and that he cannot reach forth. Praise God. But God hears every prayer, every testimony, every sound of worship. And I believe, amen, that God is attentive to the cries and to the prayers and to the petitions of his people. Amen. So it's wonderful to know that our God hears. Amen. But I'm thankful that God has given us the ability to hear in the natural, but I want to talk tonight about spiritual hearing, spiritual hearing. You know, there are so many uses to our hearing, you know, communications, warnings, educations, direction, encouragement. We said that, but then there are times in which our ability to hear can really be misused. 
none of us need to listen to any old gossip or malice or anger. We don't need to be busy bodies. Amen. We don't need to be bragging and allowing pride. Amen. To, to stir up within our hearts. But you know, just like that little chorus that we said earlier, be careful, little ears, what you hear. You know, so important. You know, when we were kids, you might have said it. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. You know what? There's not a more untrue and false rhyme than that. You know, I've, I've been punched and been in fights sometimes that didn't hurt as much as sometimes when people would tease or accuse or be abrupt and things that had happened. And we look at that, we say, oh, well, you know, they got to get thicker skin. But, you know, we need to take responsibility for the things that are said. You know, there are so many times that we hear of situations of tragedy, you know, of people that have really been um, abused because they took something in and they felt worthless and of no value. And I think of a young uh, boy some years ago, even in our city in Halifax, of this young boy that was uh, bullied and uh, by some young people at school that, you know, you know, he couldn't get any help. Nobody would listen to him. And this young boy actually went home and he committed suicide. And that happens all too uh, frequently. We don't probably hear about it as much in which it's actually happening. But I want you to know, friends, that our ability and what I want to minister to you tonight about tonight is that our sensitivity to hearing the voice of God is so vital. It is so important in our coming to know God and into our relationship with him. Our ability to hear is so vitally important in our fellowship one with another. But old friends, I pray that God will give us the sensitivity to hear the voice of God as God ministers to us. Amen. It's so important that we're able to distinguish the voice of God from so many other voices that are current and that are present in this old world. You know, more important, even as we come together and that we sing, that we'll enjoy fellowship and we'll enjoy good conversation. So much important and so vitally important is friends is that when the word of God is going forth, when we get in our times of personal devotions and we read from his word, amen. When we are sitting uh, under uh, uh, the sound of a, of a Bible study or we're in prayer, Friends, to be able to listen to the still, small voice of God as God is speaking to us. Amen. We need to be able to hear from God as he speaks to us so often from his word. You know, the Bible says that the uh, scripture is not given by any private interpretation. I was speaking to a colleague some years ago, and he was very active within his church. And I was very, very, very surprised to hear him make this statement that he said that, you know, God speaks to others in different directions as he speaks to uh, others. Um, and not that I uh, disagree that God will use uh, various forms in which to speak to us. I've already mentioned some of those and we're talking about his word and we're talking about the preached word, whether we're talking about sometimes of singing and testimonies and then just waiting on God in prayer. But what he was suggesting is that God might speak to me in a different direction that he might speak to somebody else as it concerns our walk with him. Peter said, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men, God, uh, men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Why? Because God has a message for mankind, and we see it within his word. There are not different interpretations 
to God's intentions uh, for others than it is for 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 uh, for someone else. I, I believe that the Scripture would bear uh, evidence that the very salvation of the mankind is dependent upon our sensitivity or our ability to hear the voice of God as God speaks to us through his word, through the preached word, through a testimony, through a Bible study, through prayer, and many other ways in which God will speak to us. In the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 13 to 17, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How shall they then hear upon him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they hear, how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And he goes on, he said, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. And then he went on to say, for Elias saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? And he concludes with this, so faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Oh, friends, we need to hear from God. Just one, I, I, I can only imagine how beautiful and different our world would be if to every ear, to every heart that received and heard this beautiful, life-changing message, if they had accepted it and received it, and obeyed it, my, I will tell you, our churches could never be big enough to hold the number of uh, children of God that would come. Amen. I want you to know that uh, I think of probably one of the largest facilities that we have in Halifax would be uh, the Scotia Center. And I don't know if that holds 12 or 13,000 people, but our churches would be much uh, bigger than even that, if everyone to whom the gospel had been preached, even in our cities, had said, I believe it, I believe it, and I'm going to live this way. I want to get in tune with the voice of God. I'm going to turn the channel, so to speak, from all these other voices and, and, and messages, amen, that come over the sound waves, amen, and I'm going to get in tune with the word of God, you know, so that we become just completely sold out, as it were, for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Like Paul, who said, for me to live is Christ, and to die is to gain. Think about our social systems. You know, if people readily gave their hearts to God, how many fewer jail cells we'd have to have? How many fewer police officers? You know, there was last year that, you know, idea that we needed to defund the the police and, and, and so on and so on. But we need those today because there's such wickedness and such crime in our world and in our cities. But, you know, if, you know, people were giving their hearts to God, how many fewer police officers and departments we would need? How many fewer judges to judge crimes? How many fewer people within our social systems of, you know, social work, you know, having to deal with broken homes? So I want to say there's a lot of, you know, implications upon mankind that come because we've not gained the sensitivity to hear the voice of God. In Psalms 33, verse 12, blessed is a nation whose God is Lord. And then again in Psalms 144 and 15, happy is that people that is in such a case, yea, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. And those previous verses to that talk about the abundance of blessings that they were enjoying of what God was doing because they surrendered and they obeyed God. But oh, friends, the sadness is, is there are so many people today that are in despair and, and in stress and anxiety. Amen. Because, you know, such unhappiness because they do not understand that God has given them ears to hear, ear to hear. God help us. We have ears to hear. Let us listen to what God is saying. In our opening text, Isaiah chapter 55, 
Isaiah was really speaking in prophetic terms of Jesus Christ and of this gospel message. He was declaring really the fullness, the freedom, and the everlasting nature of this gospel, and the blessings of the gospel upon people because they're accepting Jesus Christ as Messiah. And what Isaiah was exhorting was that we needed to seize these opportunities. He said, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. Let the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, those ought to be words of such encouragement and direction and comfort to anyone that's listening. Amen to this message tonight that, friends, you don't need to live life in anxiety and concern and fear, but God is waiting upon you. Amen. To bring you unto himself. Amen. You know, we need to understand God has an intention and a purpose for your life. Verse 3 said, incline your ear and come unto me, hear and your soul shall live. Friend, I want you to know that the work and the purpose of God in your life, life is not speculative. speculative. God has a purpose. God has a design and an intention for your life. It's not a matter of us just well, let's just play it by ear and see what happens or, you know, let the chips fall what they may. But God has got a plan for us. And if we are sensitive to his voice and hearing him, friends, we're going to be on the right paths and enjoy the abundance of God. There's no substitute or artificial means for hearing from God. We talked about some of the you know, the substitutes or the artificial means of how we compensate for many challenges and handicaps within the physical life. But there is no substitute from hearing from God of what the Spirit would say to us. There's an old saying, there's none so blind as he that will not see. And there's none so deaf as he who will not hear. Years ago, Marina used to say to me, you're not listening to me. She'd come to me with some concerns. And, and you know, she always had that knack to know that you know, sometimes, you know what it's like, somebody's talking to you and you kind of got to get zoomed out. You kind of, you know, something else comes over here and you start thinking about that. But there's something about your expression. Kind of people kind of zero in, hey, you know, well, I'll tell you what, you know, when preacher's preaching too, and he sees people down looking down at their their Facebook or their cell phones and all that, I think it's pretty safe to say, you're not listening to me. But, you know, we deal with that. We, we you know, we have that happen, you know, all the time. And, you know, I got to tell you, one of my pet peeves of late, and I don't know if it's just me, but I sometimes get in the company of people and we're having conversation and I'll say something and all of a sudden another conversation with other people is stirring up all over there and I'm saying, they're not even listening to me now. You know, I said, I'm just going to sit here and be quiet. <laughs> you know, I'm going to my corner and have a little cry. But I tell you, friends, we've got ears to hear. Let's listen. Let's listen to what God. In the book of Revelation to the churches, John wrote to the seven churches that he that hath an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. In the churches of Ephesus, you know, he talked about how that they'd lost their first love. They needed to return to their first love. To Pergamos, that they were being careless in their appreciation and love for apostolic doctrine. To Thyatira, he was telling them about, you know, that there were many that were taking on the spirit of Jezebel in the last, 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 Lacedia, you know, he was talking to them and cautioning them that, you know, that, you know, that they were being hot and cold and lukewarm and being uh, casual with their experience. And he said, he said, I would that you were 
uh, uh, hot or cold, but being lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. But what he was saying is, is that God had a message for the church. And he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. Now, look, I know that there are people that look at us and say, oh, you hear God speaks to you. And, you know, you hear from God. I'm thankful that we do and that we can. Again, through his word, through the preaching of his word, through the teaching of his word. And then in prayer. You know, sometimes people have a different idea of how God speaks, almost like Elijah in the Old Testament. You know, he ran into that cave and he was frightened because Jezebel was seeking his life. And he, oh, he was praying that, God, I got to hear from you. I got to have an answer. I've, I've got to know the voice of God. And, you know, he comes to the mouth of that cave and, you know, he sees this great strong wind. Oh, that must be God. God's going to speak to me. But the Bible says, but God was not in the wind. Then he sees this fire. But the Bible says God was not in the fire. These earthquakes. But God was not in the earthquake. But then a still, small voice. And in that still, small voice, God said, what are you doing here, Elijah? He said, there are still many that have not bowed a knee to pagan gods and to the idols. He said, you're to go here and you're to preach this message, and I prepared a way for you. And we, we take such encouragement with Elijah's ministry. But, you know, if we're waiting for thunders, if we're waiting for, you know, all of these demonstrative signs, friends, sometimes we're going to miss what God wants to speak to us oftentimes just to the study of his word. The Bible cautions us to be careful of what we're listening to. The Bible says there are many kinds of voices and none of them without significance. There are so many voices that would lead us astray and their purpose and design is to destroy you and to fool you. But we need to tune in to the spirit of God and what the voice of God will say to us. 1 John 4, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. 1 Thessalonians 5, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Ephesians 6 and 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against rulers of darkness, principalities, you know, evil things. We need to be intent, or I'm sorry, we need to be diligent, amen, to listen to the voice of God. Timothy wrote, uh, Paul wrote to Timothy, or rather, in 2 Timothy, in chapter number four, he said, for the time will come, Timothy, he was telling Timothy to preach the gospel, be instant in season and out of season. He said, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrines, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears. And they shall turn away their ears or their hearing, their sensitivity and ability to hear. He said, they'll turn away from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Friend, that's the wrong path to go down. Bible talks about them being willingly ignorant. They determined and they choose not to listen to truth. In the world today, our hospitals are full of people that have listened to corrupt voices. But in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 20, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. But to note, if any man hear my voice. I will come in. We need to open that door and invite Jesus. I preached a message one time, the vulnerability of Jesus. He stands at the door of our lives and he knocks. You know, too often people kind of hear a knock at the door and they kind of go to the window and open up that blind a little bit or move the curtains back a little bit. They want to see who's there before they make a decision on who they're you know, going to open the door to. That's the way that it is oftentimes, it has been with the gospel. Oh, 
This is church. This is the gospel. This is things about God. Well, I'm not ready yet, preacher. I'm not ready yet. And they'll remain quiet within that home. Hear the blessed Savior calling the oppressed. O oh, ye heavy laden, come to me and rest. Come no longer tarry, I your load will bear. Bring me every burden, bring me every care. Come unto me. What a beautiful song. Song of hope, song of encouragement, song of direction. Praise God. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Father, tonight I pray that God, that the Spirit of God would rest upon each one online tonight. That God, there would be a special anointing on that part of our spirit, those spiritual ears, to be able to sense and to hear the voice of God. Lord, there are those tonight that you're speaking to. You're giving them direction. And God, there are those tonight that are in bewilderment. There are such uh, things happening with their life around about them. They don't know where to turn. I pray, God. Give them ears to hear tonight. Incline their ears unto you. May they come to understand the message of hope, the message of deliverance, the message of healing, of salvation that they we find within your word. Touch, Lord, each and every one. And again, Lord, we commit them unto you tonight and that, Lord, they would walk and seek after you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless.